What is up, everybody? My name is Jennifer Galarte, and to my left here we have Ilias Kayanda Kahina. We are two exercise science students at Georgia Gwinnett College, and we are going to demonstrate, perform, explain all the background information and whatnots on the Romanian deadlift. So let's get started. So it is important to know the anatomy and the joints involved as well as the muscles in the Romanian deadlift. But here are some common facts about our Romanian deadlift. So a Romanian deadlift is a compound movement exercise meaning that it works multiple muscles and joints. It's also a mix between a traditional and a stiff leg deadlift. In other words, as you perform the exercise the knee is slightly more bent but not exactly at 90 degrees or a stiff leg which is basically a knee extension. It's one of the major core exercises along with the squat and is used in many resistance training, strength and conditioning exercises and programs. So some of the muscles that are worked out in this exercise are the hamstrings, the gluteus maximus, erector spinae, the quads group and the core group. And some of the joints that are included in this are lower extremity joints, such as the hips, the knees, and the ankles. So now we're going to go more in depth as to how these all work together to create this awesome exercise. So in this slide, we're going to go ahead and look at his anatomy a little bit closer. And by anatomy, I mean more like his muscles. So as you can see here, we are in a sagittal point of view because most of this exercise is performed as far as joints and with respect to the muscles in the sagittal plane of motion. In other words, most of his joints here are in flexion or extension when he goes throughout the exercise. So some of the prime movers and agonist muscles that are exercised in the Romanian deadlift are the erector spinae, which is down his, his spine essentially here. Then we have his glutes group commonly exercised in the squat since he's kind of in a squat for his starting position. Then we have the hamstrings which is on the posterior side of his lower extremity groups and the quadriceps more focusing on the rectus femoris and the rest of the quadriceps group as well. All right and then once we got these covered we're going to move on to his supporting muscles. The supporting muscles are pretty important to stabilize his other muscles through the movement so for example his abs would stabilize his back and his hip flexors and extensors would stabilize his gluteus maximus as well as his lower limbs and the soleus gastrocnemius is really great for his ankle control as well as his knees these are all supporting muscle groups to help him control his eccentric and concentric contraction as well as his isometric in his shoulders and arms it also helps with his posture. Here's Ilias getting ready to start a Romanian deadlift. But before he does that, we're going to go ahead and pause him in the starting position and go over some of the mechanics of the exercise. So another important thing to mention again, this exercise is mainly performed in the sagittal plane of motion. A lot of flexing and extending of the joints as well as the muscles. So the hip joints in starting position are flexed just so it gives him permission to squat down and be prepared to lift the weight. But you'll see here in the video, once he starts to lift the weight, the hip joints will extend, even hyperextend throughout the motion, just so he gets full range of motion. Then we got the knee joint. As you can see here, since he's squatting down, the knees are also flexed, so he can also bend down and grab the weight. And the ankle joint is also in dorsiflexion position because as the rest of the joints are flexed, it kind of forces the tibia, which is the lower half of the body, basically where the calf muscles are, it forces it forward, causing the ankle to dorsiflex, which is essentially pointing the toes up and relying your weight more on your heels. But you'll see here, as he lifts the weight, everything will kind of extend and the hips will go for hyperextension, the knees will extend, However, in a Romanian deadlift, it's common that the knees will stay slightly bent at possibly a 45 degree angle compared to a stiff leg, which would be just knee extension overall. And the ankle joint will go into plantar flexion. So here we go, let's get him started. 
So as you can see here in slow-mo, here he goes. Another important note is that his chest is up and the arms and shoulders are in isometric contraction. And basically what that means is that it's not changing in length or muscle. He's keeping the shoulders relaxed so that he's focusing more on exercising his other major muscle groups. His back and abs are engaged as he lifts the weight just so he can get a nice protective weight lift into his motion. So that was one proper way to do it. Go Ilias! Yeah, he did it correctly. But it is quite important to break down a Romanian deadlift in its proper form and technique because it is important to stay safe and prevent injury. So here Ilias again in starting position getting ready to lift his weight. And it's very important that he keeps his sh feet shoulder width apart. And this is where the stabilizing muscles come in, such as the hip extensors and flexors, just so he makes sure he doesn't over adduct or abduct, kind of like a ballerina squat. It's important to keep his back and abs firm as he goes in, chest is up, and that, that opens up his airway. As he goes in, notice that the bar is riding along his shins. It's not scraping at it, but it's not too far to where he has to hunch over. And as he lifts the barbell, he's engaging his lower body and back, along with set shoulders, the isometric contraction I mentioned. And it's important to increase your hip thrust at the peak of the RDL. In other words, right when he's at the top of the lift, that way he's getting full range of motion of his hip. So that was the proper way to do it, but let's figure out what the horrible way is to do it. According to you now. So here are some common mistakes, if not over exaggerated mistakes, that are commonly performed during a Romanian deadlift. According to you now. Oops. Well, here's one, or well, many. <laughs> But the one I will emphasize here is that the knees are not bent correctly. There should be at least a common parallel direction in which the knees are facing, which is forward. <laughs> the knees are far too internally rotated, causing the hips to internally rotate and the ankles to be everted. This is quite a dangerous way to lift and may damage your back. There's no support in your back whatsoever and the bar is far too far away from your feet. But let's see how she does anyway. Well, you as you can tell from the sound of that, that was quite painful. Her back is still hunched. Well, now she's trying it a different way, the complete opposite, externally rotated and everted. The bar is still far away from her shins, not at all close. Her shoulders are hunched over and her back is far too hunched. There is no support of her abs or back. Well, at least you tried, Jenny. So before we move on to correctional cues, let's see if we can identify the common mistakes in these depictions. So one of the common mistakes, the first thing I see here is the bar. For the first one, the second one, even the third one. The bar should not be that far away from the body. Then we have the feet placements. In the first one, it's not even close to being shoulder width apart, and the feet are not even Flat, flat on the ground, let alone in dorsiflexion for the heel support. And Ilias is a little close together. He has his feet planted, however, his feet are a little too close together. So this might conflict with the knees as well. Then we have the feet placement in this one. The heels are way too close together, causing the knees to externally rotate and the feet are just everted. So this will cause no support in the lower extremities whatsoever. And of course, in all of these pictures, the back is far too hunched over, causing the shoulders to shrug and not have any support in the back. So let's look at some correctional cues to help with these common mistakes depicted. So here are a couple of common cues to not only correct the common mistakes earlier, but to just do an overall proper form and technique of a Romanian deadlift. 
One is to stand with your midfoot under the barbell. This corrects the barbell issue that we had before, that it was being too far away from the body, but also too close to the body. This would be good to keep it midfoot, just so it's barely touching the shins, but it's still keeping in line with your foot. Engaging your lats or your back. As we've said before, make sure your back is nice and straight and also firm. Not only will this support your posture as well as your shoulders as you squeeze your blades together, but it'll also help you lift larger loads. Keep your chest out. That's another important one. It's important to keep your airways open as you breathe in and out during an exercise. You want to avoid the valsiva maneuver as well as uh, helping to contract your shoulder blades together since you're naturally upright if you keep your chest out. And this also helps you with your back posture as well. Um, one thing that could address your shoulder width apart is definitely keeping your hands shoulder width apart when grabbing the bar. This will help you with your posture as well as just keeping it at a good distance and setting your shoulders. Keeping the core tight, another famous and, well, famous in this presentation, but common correction. Keeping your abs firm and your backs firm is very crucial to your posture, and it also helps with your breathing, especially in your diaphragm, as you breathe in during the lift and then you breathe out as you eccentrically contract and control yourself back down to the starting position. And another common cue, for, especially for Romanian deadlift, is to slightly bend your knees. Um, in the definition of itself, that's what it basically means. You don't want to bend it too much or be become a totally different kind of exercise. And if you over flex or over extend or even lock the knees, it might not be good for your joints as well. So there are a couple of variations and modifications you can use to perform a deadlift. In this presentation, we showed you a Romanian deadlift. However, here are a couple of variations you can perform. The stiff leg deadlift is basically a variation on your knee position. In the traditional Romanian deadlift, you're slightly bending your knee as you lift the barbell. However, in this one, you are keeping your knee extended as you lift the barbell, as you can see Ilias is performing. And a single leg deadlift is basically a variation of a Romanian deadlift, except you're alternating legs as you go down and you come back up. And you would alternate that as well. So here are a couple of real world applications that you may find a Romanian deadlift in. Some of them include picking up boxes, lifting grocery bags, and even lifting your child off the floor. All of these require lifting a load off of the floor essentially, thus making it qualifiable to compare it to Romanian deadlift. <laughs>